What's up you guys? So it is like interview season. I've been doing quite a few mock interviews and something that I typically ask you guys on the mock interview is questions about what your healthcare experience is and how it's kind of like prepared you for PA school. That's usually one of my questions that I ask. So much so that I've been getting questions about what is direct patient care experience or what is healthcare experience. And so I just kind of wanted to clarify that because I've been getting like, is this gonna be considered patient care experience or is that gonna be considered patient care experience? So this video is gonna be about what is considered patient care experience. Now, obviously it's not gonna be an extensive, exhaustive list you can go to your school that you're trying to apply to their website to try and figure this out um, but it's going to be a list that will kind of give you broad strokes and kind of give you more so the description of what direct patient care experience is so let's get into the video right now What's up you guys, it's Adan and welcome back to my channel. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. So I wanted to talk about direct patient care experience. Now, as I stated, obviously you can go to the school that you're trying to apply to and look at what they consider direct patient care experience, okay? There's a difference between PCE, which is your direct patient care experience, and healthcare experience. And healthcare experience is anything that you may do in the healthcare setting, in the healthcare world, okay? And there are volunteer options for healthcare experience and paid options for healthcare experience. Um, you know, I don't, they're not really called candy stripers anymore, but like the candy stripers that just kind of help um, with like transporting patients to, you know, in a wheelchair to their car or something along those lines or help with like paperwork, that's healthcare experience but it's not direct patient care experience. So what is direct patient care experience? Because this is what the majority of PA schools are really harping on. This is where you'll need to have like your 2000 plus hours. You're, you're going to be taking care of patients when you become a PA and then when you're a PA student. And so they wanna know that you have like a little bit of like world experience, I guess you could say. So what is direct patient care experience? So direct patient care experience is any experience where you are directly involved in the patient's care, right? It's in the name. It's not. It's not hard, you guys, right? So, are you um, are you transferring patients from their bed to you know the bedpan or the bathtub? Are you bathing them? Are you taking care of like their ADLs? Are you helping them in assistance with their ADLs, like movement? You know, in terms of like being an occupational therapist are you prescribing medications or coming up with treatment plans or being a part of the treatment team these are all examples of what a job that has direct patient experience may entail and so with that being said I just kind of wanted to give you guys you know three to five different options on what you can do that are certificates not necessarily you going to get like a two-year or four-year degree, a certificate that will allow you the opportunity to get direct patient care experience, like get in there quickly to start building up to those 2,000 plus hours so that you can prepare yourself for your PA school application, okay? So number one is being a CNA. You know, I'm all for that. I was a CNA. I went to go to CNA school. It was not that long and I was in there, in and out very quickly got to be able to like just kind of transition into that role and got my experience, which was great. And so being a CNA is something. Along the lines of being a CNA, you can be an MA or a nurse assistant as well. Again, certificates, but you are directly involved in the patient's care, like taking vitals, um, drawing labs, all of that stuff. You can also be a phlebotomist, like solely vampire business, just drawing blood for the lab work that, you know, was ordered. So that is also an option for you. Along with that, you can be an EMT or an EMS um, going and again, getting a certificate in those different specialties and careers uh, will allow you the opportunity to gain direct patient care experience. Another thing is becoming a firefighter. So I know like not all like firefighters are EMTs. And so you, you may just want to be, you know, on the rig and be a firefighter, but that will afford you the opportunity to have direct 
patient care experience as well. The last two that I think most people kind of go or gravitate towards besides being a CNA is being an emergency department tech or being a scribe. There you are in the mix, uh, you are drawing blood, you're changing, you know, bedpans and beds, you're wiping patients down, um, you're doing a lot. Uh, my RED techs do a plethora of things. Um, they're transporting patients to and from imaging studies. And so that is something that you can get a lot of experience in. Uh, scribes are considered by different programs <laughs> a, a, a career or a job where you can have direct patient care experience simply because you are kind of involved right there with the provider while they're making their decisions while they're seeing patients while they're coming up with the treatment plan you're documenting all of this now obviously you're not taking part in terms of like laying hands on the patient however there are lots of schools that do consider being a scribe direct patient care experience so you'll just have to be very very mindful of the fact that not every school considers it direct patient care experience so make sure you like make those nuances and and make those connections with either your admissions counselor for the program or do your research and look at the various different examples that they may have on their website on what they consider direct patient care experience okay um so i think that was like maybe six or seven even eight uh options for you but all things that you guys can look into that are, again, just certificates, not long schooling for you all, that will allow you to get in there um, quickly and be able to start working and building up towards your patient care hours because it's becoming so much more and more competitive and the number of hours that these schools are requiring are becoming more and more elevated. Um, I remember when, you know, like 1,000 to 1,500 was like the benchmark and now we're looking at 2,000, 2,500 um, and some schools that say their average student comes in with about 5,000 hours so just keeping that in mind these are some options that will help you like start off early um, while also you know maintaining whatever schooling you're already going to uh, by getting a certificate okay so hopefully this was helpful you know got to come back and come back full circle for you guys so that you guys can again get the information on what exactly is considered direct patient care experience in terms of the job like where can you get that so this is my list for you I'll put it in the description box as well or pin it to a comment just so that you can see that um, quickly and you know hopefully this answers some of your questions all right if you have any other questions for me leave in the comment section below don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel follow me on instagram and on pa and on instagram to get that c university thank you guys so much for watching i will talk to you guys next time